Welcome to NC Debrief, the show where we analyze and break down political, social, and cultural issues that affect us as Africans. I'm Tolulokwe Adelari Balogun, and today we're looking at gender representation in African film and television. Be part of the conversation and let us know what you think using the hashtag NC Debrief. My guest today, let me do an introduction. First, I have Tendashi Shetima. She is an award-winning Zimbabwean actress who starred in Cook Off, the first ever Zimbabwean film to air on Netflix, and also won the Best Actress Award at the Zimbabwe International Film Festival, while Cook Off was named Best Film. I've watched it, so should you. I also have Wilfred Okechi. Wilfred is a writer and culture critic who has written extensively on the Nigerian culture space and reported from film festivals in Berlin, Locarno, Rotterdam, Stockholm, Durban, and Lagos. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. All right, Thank so you. let's get straight into it. Now, according to Statistica.com, at least in last year, the two major cable platform um, owners on the continent will have 7.81 million and 10.23 million subscribers, respectively. Now, while OTTs and OTT is over the top, referring to film and TV contents provided via high-speed internet rather than cable or satellite and video on demand are really beginning to pick up now on the continent, the vast majority of Africans cannot afford them. The cable providers still have the eyes and the ears of the people. Dr. Martha Larzen, executive director and a professor of the film and television at San Diego State University, conducted a study of portrayals of female characters in the top grossing films of Hollywood in 2019. She found that in 2019, females comprised 26% of leaders, while males accounted for 74% of leaders. Females were more likely than male to be portrayed as leaders in two categories, as professionals, as doctors or lawyers, and as social leaders, leaders in a neighborhood. Now, females were least likely to be portrayed as political leaders or leaders of criminal groups. If you come to Nollywood, one of the world's largest uh, cinema groups, findings in one study revealed that gender stereotypical representation is highly persistent in Nollywood film, where women are often portrayed in roles that depict them as sex objects weak and often dependent on men. Men, on the other hand, are often depicted as independent, successful, and breadwinners. Women are often portrayed in domesticated and traditional roles, while the men in these films take up professional and leadership roles. So let me start with you, Tendashe. Let's talk about film and television as art forms. These are art forms that have creative license and liberty from how stories are told, who's used to tell the story. Do you think that these art forms need to carry a responsibility in helping to address and change society? Definitely. Um, media is such a powerful tool to sh that shapes our, not only our narratives, but shapes our identity. It shapes perceptions of who we are. I find that art especially is like a reflection. It's like a mirror. Mm. Many things that we watch or see or read about are ref a reflection of who we are, uh, our cultures, our norms. And so it's important for them to reflect not only um, the reality of, of what we're experiencing in day-to-day -day life, but also to reflect our imaginations and our dreams and things that we have not yet seen. Mm. Um, so I, I love art in that way. And I think it is it is a responsibility. Not, to be honest, the thing is, the reason why may, maybe perhaps we see a lot of male um, leaders in films or, you know, males are, are mainly portrayed in a in a leadership uh, in leadership roles, perhaps it's because it is still a, a very male dominated industry, and it's up to us as females to enter these spaces and you know train to be directors, train to be producers, and train to tell our own stories for as long, and also to have the money to to, to tell our own mm -hmm. stories for as long as people who have the money and who are in charge, for as long as they're males, I guess perhaps. It's not always that they'll have us in mind as leaders and as, you know, <laughs> and, and portray us in, in the way that we want to be portrayed in, a, in an authentic way. Mm. So I, I just want to challenge all the females out there to take up the role themselves. The responsibility is up to us really to tell our own stories. 
Okay, it's interesting you bring up uh, females taking charge and being there to tell their same um, the stories. Wilfred, what do you think about the artist owing the public and movies becoming classrooms? Now, for me and many other people, you use a movie to get away. You don't want to think about your regular life. You don't want to think about what's happening every day and things you see every day. Movies are sort of an escape for many of us. And um, when you look at it, where is the line between just wanting to tell these stories and sort of forcing things to be a certain way or portraying things in a certain way because you don't want to encourage a trope. You don't want to continue to encourage stereotypes. Where do we find the balance in that? Uh, thank you. That's a great question. I, I, it's, it's, it's also a difficult one. Um, I mean, it should be easy, but it's not that easy because movies primarily, as you say, are for entertainment and you just want to be entertained. But also art has a responsibility also to not just reflect society, but also to, to show the way that things can be, you know, and to create change. But, but expecting a movie to, you know, be all things at once at the same time, that might not be too, too fair on the, on, on the movie. So um, that's why I say that it's harder than it, it, it looks. So, but I think that, you know, there's a responsibility here that we should not neglect as artists or as creators. And that's not just to reflect society, because if society is telling us that, you know, women don't count and women's voices don't matter. If you make movies that say that you're reflecting society, but also you are not showing the way that things can be, you know, you might have to go a step further and make movies where women matter, where women's lives matter, where women have power and agency. And 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 you don't have to preach, you know, to to to, to when you are depicting these things. You you can do it subtly. You can make a film where, for example, the president is a woman. Mm. Historically, it's a it's a male role. But why can't it be a woman, you know? And then you just slide it in there. You can make a film where you know, the person who has the power in the village is the woman. And, you know, you don't have to go about, you know, making... So you, you don't have to beat them <laughs> over the head. You just sort of make it normal. You don't have to make a big deal about it. Exactly. Normalize it. Yeah. And, and people begin to see these things and see that it's possible and see that, you know, they can be this way. Okay, so my next question is to the both of you. Now, since it's its emergence, um, Nollywood has had the profound influence on African culture. Um, the Nollywood industry accounts for so many things, and the culture has brought about the Nigerian accent, style of dress, behavioral idiosyncrasies as well, all of which are very distinctly Nigerian, are now being transmitted as images across the globe. In Nigeria, the film industry's role is still evolving. However, certain factors are altering the profile of what could be regarded as the country's culture, while the film industry itself is undergoing a crucial transition. One can even make the case for Nigeria and South Africa being the leading countries when it comes to exporting African culture. So let me, so the question here is, in terms of the facts, particularly, let me start with Nigeria, Wilfred. Um, some of Nigeria's most celebrated filmmakers are female. And you heard Tendashi earlier when she said that more women need to pull up a seat to the table, be involved so that the reflection and the representation of women on, on set um, and on screen can be different. But if we have so many celebrated female producers and female uh, filmmakers, what influence do you think that female filmmakers actually really have in Nigeria, in South Africa, and anywhere else when it comes to gender issues and specifically gender-based violence and how it's portrayed in films? If you're going to write a script today in Nollywood, um, I mean, if you have RMD, you have Ramsey Noah, I don't think there's any more bankable, you know, male actors, you know, beyond this two. Every other person is female, from Momoni to Genevieve to everybody's female. And mm. and they they want to play these actresses, these women want to play, you know, strong women roles. Yeah. They want to play interesting yeah. roles. They don't want to be punching, they don't want to play roles that always make them punching back. So I think that, you know, the more power that women have, both in front of the screen and be, even behind as they transition to directing and producing, you know, it's going to reflect eventually in the kind of representation that, that we see. We have a long way to go, but wow. um, 
I think that we've started okay. gradually. So, Tendashi, you say that Wilfred is talking more about Nollywood. So let's look at what's happening in Zimbabwe and the film industry there. Um, and this study that looked at this is a study that we can almost see reflected in most whatever local film industries we have across the continent, where women are most commonly employed with female stereotypes from the femme fatale, the career woman, the trophy wife, primary caregivers as women, uh, as wives and mothers, dependents, lazy, sometimes secondary to men. So when you look at how Zimbabwe's film industry seems to be opening up now, especially with the success of Cook Off, do you think that space is getting to a point where they're also ready to tackle um, gender representation and how women are being represented in Zimbabwean film? Definitely. Um, I'm so excited um, because actually there is an upcoming film that was directed by a new, uh, you know, it's her debut directing actually mm. film. And um, it's really exciting because all the female characters in this film are going to be um, females. And in fact, it was nominated for, um, is it an Afrima Film Award yes. uh, recently as well? So I, I'm really excited because she, this director represents, uh, her name is Malaika. She d represents, uh, I think, a new wave, like you mm. said, of upcoming fem female uh, directors. And to be honest, to be fair, I've had a lot of young females actually um, approach me and say that they're interested in, in becoming film directors or producers or actors. And also just to reiterate that I think it is very, very important to to realize that it's down to the writing, right? Mm. So we could have like the money, we could have we could have the the producers, the female directors, but the writers, the people who pin the stories, the people who, who are in charge of, of constructing the narratives mm. need to be people who are also open-minded and progressive. Because at the end of the day, we want uh, quality stories that really tell, our, 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 that represent us and tell our stories in an authentic way. Yeah. And and so the, the narratives, the writers, the people who are really at the, at the behind the scenes who are really creating these stories need to to be intentional uh, it doesn't just happen overnight <laughs> it has to be an intentional drive and i am hopeful for zimbabwe i'm hopeful for south africa i'm hopeful for africa in general i really believe that there are new stories coming out and they're authentic and there's a global interest in our stories and i'm really excited about the future Okay, yes. we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk a bit about Me Too, and we'll also talk about solutions. What does it mean? And we can't have a conversation about gender representation in African film and television if we don't talk about how men are represented. We'll be right back. Africa is rising. Again, we hear our sounds echo on the other side. Afrobeat and Afropop reinvented, hip life brought back to life, New energy infused into Kwaito and Quella. Africa is balling. Every stroke, every shot, every race, we find our place at the top. Taking the helm of real power, new hopes for democracies. A breed of entrepreneurial tigers, audacious storytellers, and a promising generation raring to go. Truly, Africa is rising. And this is where the stories that define our continent live. Watching the debrief on New Central, and today we're talking gender representation in African film and television. So I want to get into how men are represented, and that's also a gender. We might focus a lot on the representation of women in film, but there are certain talking points that need to be had with how men also tend to be represented. Now, men in many cases, many will say across countries on film and television, fail to show nuanced representations of men. Oftentimes, men are not allowed to show emotions and feelings, and the portrayals tend to uphold toxic masculine standards. Uh, for us in Africa, these portrayals can entrench 
harmful social behaviors, practices, and more. So, Tendashi, let me start with you on this. When we see how women are portrayed, that is obviously being addressed. We're asking more women to get behind the cameras, to write, um, to be producers, to be the directors. But we also have to look at what has been traditional, stereotypical portrayal of men throughout the years. How do we challenge that, this strong man narrative, man as the head of the house, man as the only and final decision maker, that does tend to reflect in our society and come out in very harmful um, ways? How do we address that representation um i guess again same points with with how we represent women mm. um the writing who's writing the stories are we writing intentionally and trying to create what we want to see now it is true that a lot of in our, a lot of our societies men still have that patriarchal um kind of hold yeah um but it is changing there are some men that i know personally that are not like that you know that are very open-minded very supportive of women um and so why 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 is it that um perhaps we're not seeing more and more of those kinds of men being represented in our stories we need to see that that as well i'm reminded of uh black lightning i don't know if you've watched it mm -hmm. but um i watched it recently i binged it but I was so impressed by how um, Black Lightning is actually portrayed in this in this uh, series because he is, like you said, nuanced. He has emotions, he shows emotions, but he's very, very strong and powerful at the same time. And he's a leader in his family. So I, I was really impressed by that writing, and I, I hope to see more of that. But again, it just comes down to who is writing the story. Are we being intentional about the kind of man we want to portray? Because a lot of young men are watching, and they may be influenced to become, uh, you know, to be to become better in in society if they watch something that represents them in a way that we would love to watch to see them um becoming okay so wilfred she mentions being intentional so let's talk about me too um me too has been very intentional and in sort of breaking down um, I, I don't know what I say, towers and old guard in a way. It hasn't completely finished that work, but it has definitely started a work in Hollywood. And we've seen the translation of Me Too into different languages and different sectors as well. So we've seen that ripple effect, and there's been an increase in Western stories told around unconventional female characters. And in some cases, when people are not satisfied with representation, they call it out. They have these conversations on social media, and sometimes this can affect box office numbers. You can even get apologies uh, sometimes from the media houses behind some of these content. Do you think that holding artists and filmmakers to high progressive standards and enforcing that in the courts of public opinion, AKA social media trending, hashtag cancel culture, um, as it may be, is it something we should look to emulate in Africa when it comes to the contents that we have in film and television? Should we encourage a social reward system um, and encourage any form of censorship based on where we want our societies to go and how we want them to be represented in film and television? Hmm, that's tricky. Mm. I mean, I mean, yes to social reward system, but no to censorship. Mm. That's for me because um, you don't want to tell art is art is has always been subjective and will always be subjective. I'm going to tell the story that I want to tell. I'm going to tell the story that appeals to me or that that I have in me to tell. It may not be a perfect story, it may not be a good story even, but it's the story that I can tell, only me can tell. Um, so, so, so yes, it's it's very, very good and very, you know, responsible to hold artists to, you know, higher standards. When you put out a film, you know, you check, it, the critics check how many women have speaking lines in this film, how many women have, you know, um, positions have, have agency in this film or are they just the girlfriend are they just the wife who does nothing and cries and and you know all that um and if you call it out you know people begin to see yeah this is where we're going wrong this is what we're not doing enough this is where we can do but then to tell the filmmaker or the artist you know this is how you should make your film i don't I don't think so. I mean, you can you can say that without particularly censoring them. You know, you can suggest, you can review, you can give feedback. Um, but 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 saying maybe oh there should be. Um, I mean, and, and I guess in some ways, you know, 
it, 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 it's a slippery slope, you know, because you don't want to to go so far that, you know, the society is beginning to tell filmmakers how to think and yeah. what to do it. I really think it should be the other way around. That's mm -hmm. why filmmaking is such a progressive, you know, um, medium. And I don't really think that conservatives have much of a place, you know, making... Um, Regulations film, or giving direction. You know, Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So you have to be you have to be able to think outside the box, and 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 if you lead, your audience will follow. You mm -hmm. know, it's from time to time you're going to need people to push you and guide you and say you're not doing this enough, you're not doing this right. But you also have to be prepared to be fluid and to be agile as a filmmaker and know when the tide is changing. Of course, the tide is changing, has yeah. changed even yeah. in some ways. And if you're still holding on to, oh, men don't cry, so my character is not going to cry, mm. that's mm. not, you're not being, you know, Realistic. fair to yourself and fair to your audience, mm. you know. So you have also have to be in tune to, you know, what is happening, you know, globally, what is happening locally, culturally. You know, how are the people thinking? How do the people, how can the people think? How do the people want to think? And, and you know, put out all kinds of things and challenge people. Yeah, so I'm not big on censorship, but I'm big on, um, you know, kind of criticism, okay. you know, and the kind of um, social reward system, like you so said. So let me ask the artist who probably has been on the receiving end of some of this yes, criticism. Yes. Uh, Tadashi, so social media is there. And with Cook Off, I know you would have received, and even before, because you have been um, in the space before that time. But... How do you feel about that? The the power of social media to sort of form, to rework, to to reimagine the work that creatives in the film and television industry are putting in. One episode will go out and it can start a hashtag that might even threaten the continuation of a show because of how a character was portrayed or how, um, uh, how a situation was addressed. What do you feel about that power that social media now has, especially as we talk about representation of women and men and children in African film and television? I think it's a blessing more than it is a curse. Mm. <laughs> because if you think about film as a business, right? Back in the day when you produce stuff, uh, even on TV or um, or in cinema, right? When, when things were shown to the audiences, you didn't have a way to get direct feedback. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, it's like you'd go to the cinema. Yes, people might write. Uh, I don't know where they would communicate before social media. How would people you know, speak to the producers about the film or about the TV series? I think there were very limited channels of communication yeah. but the fact that your audiences can give you direct feedback right away when it, when it's just been aired and they can tell you what they think about uh your story and your narratives and what you're doing i think it's a blessing for filmmakers mm. and it's really about how we then take that and how we apply um their feedback you can choose not to apply it i mean it's still a choice right yeah um <laughs> or you can take it and try to constructively um, and progressively try to implement some of those thoughts. Uh, it's, in business, we call it, uh, the, we would call this kind of consumer, a prosumer, one who is, who is uh, involved in the production mm -hmm. and in the consuming of the product. So I think it's a, it's a blessing mainly, I think, for, for filmmakers. All right, so this is my final question to the two of you. Um, we love our societies, we love our cultures, we love some of our traditions, but we also know that a lot of change has to come. There are many issues that our societies across the continent must address. Consent, gender-based violence, abuse and molestation in homes and outside of the home, sex for grades, sex for favors, female genital mutilation, child marriage, stigma around divorce, stigma around not having children at a certain expected time. So many conversations that film and television content can push. So what do you think is the way forward in using film and television with gender representation in mind to push these conversations and to address um, these issues? Wilfred, let me start with you very quickly. Um, yeah, I think be intentional about your work. There's so much work to be done. Yeah. It's not going to be done in one generation even. It's, mm. you know, an ongoing process. And I think don't don't be a problem or don't be a barrier as a filmmaker. Think about what you are putting out. Think about what you are letting out. Are you perpetuating harmful stereotypes? 
you know, if this character is going through this, is there a reason that they go through this? What is the, you know, greater, you know, potence, you know, to, to your story? And, and when you think something through, also share, you know, sometimes you collaborate, you know, art, art is a collaborative form. And whatever you missed, somebody else might be able to, to catch. Be intellectual, intellectually, curious and and for, as artists you have this power because you have this blank slate yeah. you can yeah. draw whatever picture that you want to so be careful and be intentional about what you know you want to see all right Sadashi, he has used your word intentional so you cannot use intentional in your answer you've already used it before so what do you think is the solution how do we get um, these conversations, these challenges that our societies must address for our own progress, how do we get those out, especially considering how we're representing the genders in film and television across the continent? You know, I'll just add to what he said, because you're right, he said, <laughs> he said what I was thinking. Um, but I just want to add, especially touching on the point of collaboration, mm. I feel that in, in, in Africa in general, I think there's still a stigma, even with just being in the arts. Um, there's still a lot of, I don't know, maybe in West Africa it's a bit different, but I know in Southern Africa there's still a large push for, for kids or people to get into more blue-collar um, mm -hmm. industries and to, you know. So, but if we actually think about how powerful media is, I, I am so interested in seeing a synergy across industries for them to use the arts like you're saying to use film to really deal with social issues and things that we're facing in africa is because it's such a powerful influential tool the things we watch the things we consume really yeah. do affect our perceptions as humans and so i would love to see more collaboration not just within the arts but even with other sectors and other industries so let's tell the stories about the engineers who are working in the mines let's tell the stories about the nurses who are working in health in the health industry let's tell the stories about you know that corporate um woman or man who is who's pushing the boundaries i is there a film made about dangote it has they have have you made a film about all these powerful people who are driving our african society forward mm. we need to start telling more stories about the different uh sectors and really you know inspiring each other using film um, on how we can really push Africa forward. So I'm really looking forward to that collaborative spirit across industries. How can the arts be more uh, integrated in other sectors? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you to my guests. I've had with me Zimbabwean award-winning actress Tendashi Ashitima and uh, Wilfred Okichi. He have, um, and he's a film critic. You also know I know, you're about to know, he's actually a doctor. So I should have been saying Dr. Wilfred this whole time. <laughs> he's actually a doctor as well. So thank you too for joining me uh, for this edition of The Debrief. We hope that these kind of conversations will come up and they'll continue to come up and they'll be able to spur action and they'll be able to spur consequences and we'll move forward. But of course, the show might be over, but as you know, the conversation never ends. Please follow us on all of our social media platforms. Go to our website, use our social media handles. We are at New Central TV. Use the hashtag NC Debrief. Let us know your thoughts on gender representation in African film and television. Are we representing our women, our young people, our old people, our men, the way that they need to be represented? And let us know your thoughts on this subject. Until next time, I'm Tolu Lokwe, Adelaru Balogun. <laughs>